Lighthouse. Glad you guys are all here this morning. Let me, us, let me open us up in a word of prayer. Lord, we take this moment right now to just still our hearts and our minds as we've transitioned from our morning. Lord, may, may we be fully present with you today. As we open your word together, as we worship, as we enjoy each other, Lord, I pray that you will be, that you will enjoy this as well. Lord, you are most glorified when we are, because we are created in your image, Lord, I absolutely believe that you are most glorified when we are most satisfied. So Lord, may we find satisfaction and hope and joy and peace and restoration in your presence today, Lord. We give you this gathering. May it be for your enjoyment. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Oh, yeah. Eric. Eric. Call him Mr. Eric. Would you like to come up? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Do you hear what these children are saying, they asked him? Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. Yeah! All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, kids. That was lovely. Okay. So uh, I would like to formally welcome you to Lighthouse. If this is your first or second time, I'm, we're really glad that you're here. And if you would like to know more about Lighthouse, we have um, communication cards that are just around the corner right there next to our welcome table, and you can grab one of those and scan the QR code, or you can fill, we also have like a traditional one that you can fill out. So we would love for you to do that, and um, yeah, so that you can find out more what's going on at Lighthouse. And um, also, I wanted to uh, just, I don't know how to make this transition, it's kind of awkward, but um, we, uh, we love our kids at Lighthouse, and we're so glad that this happened, and we would like stuff like this to happen more. And so we would love for you to get involved. You don't have to sing with the kids, trust mm -hmm. us. But there are all sorts of things that you can do. And so we would just, we just want you to know that kids are valued here, and we want you to be a part of that. So if you would like to, we, um, if you have an idea, if you some, God's placed something on your heart, we would love for you to talk to Eric. Eric, raise your hand after the service. Yes, or whenever, yes. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for all that you do. And then um, also, 
part of how much we love kids here is we want to do an Easter egg hunt next week. For all the billions of kids that are going to come, we want to make sure that we have enough Easter eggs. So thank you for people that have already brought them. But if you could bring um, a dozen or however many you want of filled Easter eggs, please, we would appreciate that. And then we're going to hide it for the kids next week. So kids, you don't know about this. It's going to be a surprise. But, um, but yes, we would love to be able to do an Easter egg hunt. It's always fun. So bring eggs for that. And then also, we would love to r roll out the red carpet for all of the people that are going to come on Easter. Because I don't know if you know, but we, Easter is our favorite time of the year here. And we want, yeah, we want to make a party of it. We want to be able to celebrate properly. So we would love for you to bring something, to, um, something for hospitality next week. If that's something that you do, we would love for you to chip in for that. So bring some donuts or muffins or... Um, Eileen makes these delicious like tomato and mozzarella things that she puts balsamic vinegar on. They are to die for. So if you have like a thing that you would like to bring, please do. Um, we would love it to be finger food because it's just easier. But if it needs a fork, that's fine. Don't hesitate. Still bring it. So, um, so if you'd like to, um, if you would need more information on that, you can talk to Mary. Mary, can you raise your hand right there? Mary will plug you in. But um, just... We would love for you to be able to bring something so that we can have a lot for everybody to partake, so we can all party together. Feasting is a is part. Of, I I believe it's actually one of the spiritual disciplines is to feast. So um, yes, it absolutely is. So we're going to feast together. And then also, I wanted to let you know that coming up soon we have the calendar for April and May, and um, and part of that I will announce we are having a our women's gathering will be in April. Um, it's going to be April 13th, and so I wanted to get, ladies, get that on your calendar. We'll tell you more details about it, but it's going to be, well, I can tell you right now, it's April 13th from 10 to 12 here at the church. It's going to be, be a spring brunch, and it's going to be fun. So bring all of your friends and a dish to share, and we will get together, ladies. So that's going to be on April 13th, and then we also have an international students' dinner on April 5th. So I wanted to give you a heads up on that. Um, that's uh, we would love your participation in that. It's an, it's an incredible time. All right. So I believe that that is all for me. I don't, since, since I'm out of order, I don't really, now we're moving. Okay, I'm done. Are we greedy? I think we're doing the greeting. No, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, all right. Thank you for being patient with me. I don't know what I'm doing. I apologize. <laughs> all right, we have 90 seconds to greet. Would you get up and say hello to everybody? Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive Empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive Glorious day, what a glorious way.
part of, if not the focus this morning, that God provides, he saves, he rescues us. He is our help. He is whatever need we have, he's the answer. He's the solution. If we feel stuck, he's the one that makes us unstuck. Call out to him this morning. Cry out to him. Proclaim him this morning. Here on Prom Sunday, we proclaim that he is king, that he is savior that he has rescued us. Remember, we remember that this morning. And we take this time in the middle of our worship to also to acknowledge that he provides everything, he's faithful, and so we give with cheerful hearts. Father God, we come to you this morning praising you, thanking you, bowing before you. We see you, Jesus. We know you as our king, and yet you call us friend, 
we're amazed by this and over, even overwhelmed by it. We pray, Lord, this, this morning you would give us deeper insight, a wider understanding and, and revelation from you about who you are and who we are to you. We worship you, Lord, with all that, all that we are, with all that you have given us. And so we give to you this morning, Lord, uh, we give to you what is already yours, proclaiming your goodness, your faithfulness, and our desire to serve you and honor you. Be honored and glorified this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Stop. 
to understand Lord we thank you for your plan which is far beyond anything that we could even begin to understand we just thank you for your sacrifice we thank you that we can know you Lord and every single day help us be people who deny ourselves deny our flesh we pick up the gospel Lord the cross and we carry it with us as we glorify you just in the way we live our live our lives Lord we thank you, Lord. We pray for strength. We pray for increased trust and faith in you, Lord. Pray that you would calm our hearts and our minds as we open your word and dig into truth, Lord, that you would illuminate your word for us, that it would it would read our hearts as we read it. Lord, we thank you so much for your sacrifice on the cross. Let us always be a people who call you Hosanna, who celebrate who you are, God. We worship you. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, guess what? We already did our announcement, so what do we do now? There's usually that announcement transition. Maybe some of you are waiting for this time to go to the bathroom, but um, we already did our announcements, and um, I'm planning to go long. Sorry. 
No, um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Here, uh, kids, you may be dismissed to your classes. That is still happening right now. And can we give the kids a big hand for uh, starting off our service this morning? And a big thank you to Rachel for uh, coordinating that. And we want to do more things like that. And so parents, parents of children, grandparents of children, people who know people who know children, listen, God is doing a thing in our kids' ministry right now. We're having a meeting after our service today. Uh, please be praying for that because we need to gather to, um, to pray about and discuss how to grow God, how God is leading us to grow his kids' ministry because more kids are coming, okay? And, um, and we want to truly be inviting our neighborhood, but we need to be ready and um, equipped and encouraged and empowered to receive that growth. So I, I want to ask you as a church, Pray for our kids' ministry. Pray for Eric. Pray for our team. Consider, prayerfully consider, listening to the Lord tell you that you are, in fact, called to kids' ministry. Okay? Uh, okay. Listen to what he, whatever he calls you to. Okay? Um, but if it's kids' ministry, we could use your help, even if you're not um, working directly with kids. What we definitely want is um, to have a ministry where kids are as, as much a part of the church and seen as anybody else. Because the Lord called us to make disciples of everyone, including kids, from kids on, on, on up. And so that's important to us around here. And um, also important is uh, giving them candy and stuff. So um, next week, bring um, not just uh, eggs, but um, plastic eggs that, are, that have candy in it. Okay, that would be great. I know it's a, if you brought uh, plastic eggs and they were empty, we'll still work with that. You know, we'll say, hey, see, the tomb was empty. Do you get it now? Um, <laughs> Now do you get it? And that'll be a lesson. But uh, if you can, bring, bring, some, bring some candy to put it in there. We'll hide it and we'll have fun with that. Okay. This morning is Palm Sunday. Anybody know what Palm Sunday is? It's, it's a start of an incredible week. It's a start of a, an incredible, where we remember an incredible week. A week where we see in Scripture the heart of Jesus' passion come to life. So much of his interaction that is captured in the Gospels is during this week. And it blends into, or our last series blends into Palm Sunday, that's why we still have Teach Us to Pray, in, in that the passion that Jesus has and had and still has to win us over and to bring us close to God is the same passion we relive and understand more and more when we come to the Lord in prayer. It, well, what we have been learning during our series uh, about prayer uh, and during our prayer week is this clear truth, and I hope you'll anchor into, that the Holy Spirit will speak to you about and you'll receive it, is that God wants us close to him. We weren't meant to have a religion that enables us or that provides us a phone number with which to text God some request, and then we hear back. But it's like a distant relationship. It's, co it's a connection, but it's somewhat distant. When we come before the Father in the name of Jesus through him, we are coming into his presence. Jesus brought us a new revelation about who God is. He's, he didn't say that he is like a father. He's saying, that I, I'm revealing this to you. I'm letting you know that he is your father. Regard God Think of him as your father, and that changes everything. That makes you a son. That makes you a daughter. So you come to him that way. I remember um, when I was working with um, in the foster care system and being a case manager for kids, there was this one child who uh, was, they, they said his, that one of his diagnoses was uh, attachment disorder, reactive attachment or something like that. Basically, really hard to attach and always push people away. At a, a, and uh, this child had reason based off of um, where they started from and their family of origin. Where we ha had this one parent, foster parent, who loved this child for two and a half years straight while this child was pushing her away would just run away, uh, uh, attack her, show nothing but not love to her. But she had such commitment to this child and she understood their background that she decided, I'm just going to love this child. Whatever they give me, I give love, one way or another. And with a lot of coaching and, and, um, 
and help from, from therapists on how to work as a kid. And then I mean, a payday was in our office is when she comes in and says, it happened, it happened. He hugged me. Out of nowhere, it wasn't like when she was trying to get it, just out of nowhere, after two and a half years of just pouring love and providing a safe atmosphere, this child, when all the other kids were just playing on the floor, she was watching TV with them, interacting like she normally does, out of nowhere, he gets up out of, off the floor and just crawls up on her lap. And she's like, what is happening? Puts his head on her shoulder and just leans into her. Just enter her like that. That child finally realized that the safety, the safety that it felt within family didn't have to be scary, that it really is family. It really is a family, and he accepted her as, as family. And many of us had that experience during the week of prayer, or have had that experience in your relationship with God, where we finally could realize, I could surrender, I could give in, I could trust you 100%. I can actually regard you as Father, as my God, the one who loves me, if not the only one in life who loves me. This morning, our message is that Jesus brings us close. And what he's speaking to us is that he has done the work, he has fought the fight and given us the victory so that there's nothing between us and our Heavenly Father. I mean, maybe now, in this season, if not this morning, you can say, yes, yes, I'll open up my arms. I'm not coming to God with suspicion. I'm not coming with God wondering if he'll answer me. I'm coming to him as if he's my loving father. And that might be scary, even if you believe that it's true. Let's go over, just as a review, our Teach Us to Pray passage. Many call this the Lord's Prayer. In Matthew chapter 6. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I know many of my um, Catholic friends are wanting to say this with me right now, right? You can. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It's a quick review of our, of our series. Come close and connect with your heavenly father as a priority. As a priority over your presenting need, come close and connect with your heavenly father. When we finally get to that place where we realize that's priority number one, even though your felt need is so strong, whatever it might be, the need for provision, the need for a relationship, the need for for help or protection, getting to your heavenly father is what is needed. And that is only done through Jesus, through a relationship with Jesus. Align with his, his will. You might be calling out to God, help me, help my kids, help. But before we even get there, even if it takes a split second, we need to get our hearts to say, I trust you and I align myself with your will. I need your will. Affirm your trust and your priorities with him. Be cleansed from any foothold of the world, flesh, and the devil. Get rid of unforgiveness, whatever that might be, hangups and habits, those temptations that we have. Pray in the presence of your Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. So from now on, we don't have to rush into a prayer, God, help me, help me. That's, that's natural, especially if you're falling off a cliff. Uh, but, but even so, when we pray, we, we have this biblical understanding, this biblical understanding, this truth that will get to our heart, that when we're praying, we're not just like typing an email and sending it off. We're speaking to our Heavenly Father. We're in His presence. We're speaking to Him. We have full access with this understanding, this faith understanding. We have full access to come completely to Him because of Jesus because of our relationship with Jesus. Bring that knowledge and understanding into prayer so that prayer is no longer a wish, but a confident and even bold conversation with the one who loves you. Look at this picture. This picture right here is somebody praying. Does that seem nice? You know, the, the, especially when people post these Instagrams and social media stuff, and it's just, here's me being humble with my coffee and my book out and 
yeah, just doing my humble thing, praying so that you guys could see me. Um, it's not about you, and maybe the caption might be, it's not about what you think of me, but um, go ahead and like it. Um, but maybe you see this picture and you think, oh, that's what I want. I want to get someplace. I want to finally be able to get someplace where I could pray. Maybe that's the ocean for you. Maybe that's the woods. Maybe that's your closet. Maybe that's here right now instead of listening to me. The point I want to get at with this picture is that that posture, that sense of being in that, that perfect space, from now on, that's available to us anywhere, anytime. Now, there's times, there are places where we need to get to. There's something about getting up and going someplace to get to him. It's almost that, that, that physical representation of desire, and that's good. But from now on, wherever we are, at a stoplight, whatever, we can close our eyes um, until somebody honks uh, and just know that you're in his presence. His presence it's, is what gives us that moment, not the environment. I mean, that said, I still would love to get to the beach and pray, you know. Let's all do that. Yeah, okay, right? Hmm. You can come to your father anywhere. Anywhere is a special pray, place now in Christ. Amen. Here's our, here's our key passage or our key point. Again, Jesus brings us close to our father. Jesus brings us close. And for many of us in here, if not all of us, Jesus has brought us close. I want to bring somebody up here. Um, Donovan, can you come up here? I want to have Donovan share a little bit about what this series and uh, the week of prayer has been like uh, for him. And uh, will you give Donovan a, a hand? Because that's always a great transition is applause. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you're wondering, what do we do while we're waiting for something to happen? Just go ahead and applause. Yeah, that's, that's always good. Um, here, let me get your microphone. So I've been asking, uh, I, uh, whenever I can, I ask people what, what God's doing in your life lately. What, what's he saying to you? And, um, and I asked a handful of people what uh, the week of prayer has been like. And, and uh, Donovan shared some things that I just would like all of you to, to uh, hear as well. So um, I'm just going to ask you a little bit um, interview style, Donovan. I know there's like a few books that you could um, share as far as what God's been speaking to you about. But um, share with us, if, if you will, about what God revealed to you, what he shared to you about family in, um, during the week of prayer and just during this season that you've been in. Well, um, throughout, I've gotten the message, change your perspective. And it took a lot of prayer and uh, reading and praying and speaking with other believers to get that uh, I'm not alone. I've been alone a lot of my life, but I look out here, and God has brought me into family. Even though mine are Amen. gone, Amen. they're not here with me. I have family here and people that I haven't seen or met yet, and it's all yeah. due to what God did for me through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and so, Donovan, a little background. If um, I, I think you've given me permission to share this. <laughs> um, if not, sorry. Um, <laughs> Donovan's background, your background has been one where um, uh, you don't share the same story as people being raised in, in a two-parent home or anything like that. Can you share just a little bit of what your upbringing would, would be like or has been like and, and just how this emphasis or this revelation that God has given you about the church being your family and how that comes together or how that well, goes yeah, together? Um... I lost my brother, I was five, he was three. I lost him at the age of five. Uh, I was tossed in the foster care system. Um, I basically was just tossed around a lot and uh, had to basically raise myself. I lost my mother at 19, my grandmother a year after her. And then after my grandma, three years after that, I lost my grandfather. So I just been, it's been me. So I felt, mm -hmm. I felt that loneliness, that despair, desperation to have family. And as I've been through and said during this prayer week, it's just been a revelation from God telling me, I have you. You're always here. You are my family. Mm. All of you right out there, you're my family. <laughs> That's right. Would you guys all affirm that? Yeah. That, yeah. that Donovan yeah. is surrounded by family. Yeah. And it was only not that long ago that um, 
your last remaining uh, relative had passed away, right? She was my uh, mother's best friend, and I'd known her since I was 15. And she just passed away a few months ago, so that was the last uh, hardship and that I had to deal with inside, you know, it broke yeah. my heart. And so, you, you share some story, uh, your, your life um, reflects some similarities that might even be in this room, where our upbringing, it, it wasn't as rosy as we might hear from others. And all of us have something about our parenting or our upbringing that, we, that maybe did us harm instead of good, right? And so we have a, a feeling about that. <laughs> and, uh, and it keeps us away from people. But what has God done in the last few months here? And what did he do during the week of prayer as, uh, as Donovan shared? He, he made us realize, many of us realize, that what he's doing here is building family. What we share with Donovan is our father, our father. And because Donovan was bold enough to share his story, we could understand that. It's not like he's our father. He is our father. We are family. And we regard one another that way. Amen. Amen. Donovan regards us that way. And can we just share with him through applause and just anything that he is, he is part of our family. And what does family do? Family helps each other out. We help each other out. We're there for each other. We might even hurt each other. But we don't let anybody else hurt each other, right? That's what family does. I'll pick on you, but if somebody else does, they got theirs coming. That's what family is like. Now, Donovan's been working hard around here. He's been doing a lot of stuff around uh, our campus facilities. Thank you for that, uh, Donovan. Thank you for setting up these, uh, these chairs. And, and we're, uh, there's a, a handful of us uh, men that have gathered around um, Donovan as he's helping us. We want to help him too. And I want to make church real church. So with Donovan, Donovan's permission, I'm letting you all know that as a church, we need to help Donovan, okay? We're, um, we, he needs help with all of his efforts and with God's work in his life to, to, um, to, to move forward, okay? So we need prayer. Uh, we need uh, resources. And what I'm going to ask you is that um, if you would consider as a church, as a people of God, to um, give an extra a check or a little extra something to our benevolence fund. Now, we've been using our Benevolence Fund for a few people in the, in the community and within. And so when you give to Benevolence Fund, it's, to, it's a care fund for those that, that need um, a, a little help uh, from now. And then they, in turn, will help uh, later. So when you give to the Benevolence Fund, you're, you're doing what the Bible says, bringing it before the leaders, the elders of the church, and entrusting it them to distribute accordingly. And, and so that's what we're going to be doing. And, um, and, and Donovan, I just want to let you know that... Um, you are my brother, and, and you are, I am so thankful that you're in my family. He, he's a wonderful man. Is there, yeah, is there anything else? Um, I know there's about three, five hours more that you could share. Anything else that comes to mind right now that you just want to um, let us know as your, your church family? Uh, like I said, change your perspective and also just pray without ceasing. And one of the biggest joys is the revelation of God's deep, passionate, personal love for me, as well as all of you. And I love you, church. Amen. Yeah. Actually, yeah, stay, stay up here. Let's, um, let's. Father God, we lift up our brother Donovan. First of all, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for him. Thank you for preserving him. Thank you for speaking to us through him, through his his faithfulness to you. Lord, will you guide us and direct us how to support our brother here? And thank you for the gift of who he is to us. We pray, Lord God, that you would remove every barrier in his life that gets between you and the purpose that you have for him. Lord, we pray that you would remove from his heart and his mind every memory, every cycle, every habit that has set itself up between him and the plans and the purpose and the heart that you have for him. We pray for victory in Donovan's life. We pray that you would give him restoration and a breakthrough and a new life, new life with new family. 
from this day forward. We pray that the rest of 2024, that you would protect Donovan from every bit of discouragement and every life from the enemy. For this we pray, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Palm Sunday. It's about victory. Let's read through it. Starting with um, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to skip that. The John 4 slides. In John chapter 4, Jesus has this conversation with this woman at a well. You've probably heard the story about the woman at the well. And she, they're having this dialogue, and she's out there by herself during the part of the day where nobody else comes around because she's an outcast. She's been out, outed. And Jesus has this conversation with her, and, the, and this conversation leads into uh, a discussion about religion and who God is and... and um, what he's about, and he reveals to her how much he knows her, and saying that you've been, uh, you're, the man you're with right now is in your husband, and you've been with five different guys, and, they're, and you're still seeking. And she said, I know you're a prophet. I could see. I could see that. And um, I'm going to pick up, I guess I am going to read it. I'm going to pick up uh, f- from there. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit, in spirit, I'm sorry, in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. I was talking to a man uh, not that long ago, a few days ago, got a haircut, um, and it was my barber, and um, uh, a a barber that I had never gone to. I came to this uh, barber shop because I was trying to avoid traffic. So I was going the long way, and then I realized I didn't know where I was going, and I went the long way the wrong way. And then I was going down the street, and I saw the sign that said, Barbara, I'm like, I need a haircut, like, two months ago. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to jump in there. And that was about 3 o'clock, and I didn't leave there until after 5 o'clock. He was cutting a hair at a time. No, uh, what had happened, we had gotten into, the, into this conversation because I said I'm a pastor, you know, because he asked me about that. Um, <laughs> that he apologized for the language he was using. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, in this conversation, we started sharing about God, and he was saying that uh, I, I love God, and I know God loves me, but I've left the church a long time ago. And, and later on, he, he added, well, I, I, maybe I was asked to leave. Um, I was, maybe it was a little bit like that, but then I made it my choice. You don't fire me, I fire you. Um, and in this conversation, he revealed that he had this longing for God. And he knows a lot of people do. And he's been reading and, and watching things on YouTube, reading about this kind of this um, segment of the population, if not the Christian population, that kind of doesn't want to do church anymore, but they do want faith. They do still have faith. But in the teaching that he was following, it, it led to this, that God is more loving than we could ever imagine, which is true. And that we just need to realize that and know that. And that changes everything. That is also true. But there's a critical piece there that he was missing that we got into a long dialogue that will continue. He says that the, the cross wasn't needed and his, the sacrifice of Jesus wasn't needed. He just did that. Um, it just kind of happened that way. And he showed us how much he cared for us about us that way. But we got into it, and I was, I was praying uh, about that, and I was like, this isn't true, and how is it important is it that I get into it right now? And it, it just hit me. It's vitally important. It's absolutely vital. There's no greater love than anybody that, than that somebody would lay down their lives for us. But Jesus didn't, didn't just lay down his life for us. He saw, before, while we were still sinners, that we needed a possibility of coming back 
to the Father. And that possibility wasn't there until he got on the cross and God put all sin on the cross. And I wanted to bring that story into this morning for us to understand that without the cross, there's no forgiveness. So on Palm Sunday, when Jesus is riding in like a king in Jerusalem, he's riding in to what would be his greatest victory, his greatest battle that would give us the full victory, and that is on the cross. We're going to read about people singing, Hallelujah, Hosanna, you're great. But what they didn't understand was just how great Jesus is. That he would see our misunderstanding and our rejection and our insistence that Jesus be the way we want him to be. Even through that, he loved us so much that he went all the way to the cross. The cross and the cross alone is our victory. Jesus is our victory. What he did on the cross gave us victory. And we need to remember that. When we see our king writing in, when we read about that, and we think about what Jesus is love, we need to remember that his love is to this extent that he died for us while we were still sinners, died for us before we understood him, died for us even while we're saying, you don't need to die for us so that we have that possibility. Now that is love. That is real, true love. Okay, um, let's start with Luke, the account of Palm Sunday. They brought it, they brought, um, speaking of the donkey that they went to go get, uh, they brought it to Jesus, threw the cloaks uh, on the colt and put it, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mountain of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in, a loud, in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I love that verse. Jesus saying, I'm... I'm not even hiding it for a second anymore. Look, this is how it is. All creation, all creation is worshiping me right now. All the creation, the stars and the heavens, they actually sing to the Lord. Scientists have even discovered that. There's a sound that's, admit, that's being admitted by every star and every planet. And they've put them together. When you hear them together, it sounds like beautiful music. Humans are the only ones that are out of tune right now. All of creation is singing the praises of God, reflecting his glory. And here are these religious leaders saying, tell them to quiet down the very thing that God brought Jesus into the world to make louder. He said, if they quiet down, the rocks will cry out. What are you going to do to the rocks? As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you had only known on this day, what would bring you peace? So all this praise is coming to Jesus, and he understands what they understand in, in his limitation. They're praising him for all the miracles. They're praising him for the hope that he's riding in, like the king that they read about. They're, they're, they're thinking, oh, the Roman government is going to get theirs now. Israel's going to be restored. The promised land It's going to be great. End of political oppression. That's what they're praising him for and looking forward to. But he comes over to a place where he can see Jerusalem and he weeps over it. Jerusalem, city of peace, where there's no peace. In the same way, I can imagine him looking over our lives and our situations, our circumstances, and this world. If you only knew what would bring you peace, we're crying out for peace. In fact, so many of us would say, I just need peace. Lord, help me, deliver me from my worry. I don't know how to not worry. And I worry that I'll never figure that out. I know that you're my peace, but there's a part of me that can't get to you. And here's Jesus speaking to us saying, I am your peace. You need to cry out to me and say, you can't do it. You don't know how to do it. He knows that. I'm going to read other accounts of the same event from Mark. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. 
They're really thinking this is it. They're worshiping him and praising him as Messiah. They're thinking this is it. This is it. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Matthew chapter 21, we read. Uh, this follows after Jesus is riding in. This took place to fulfill what was written through the prophet. Say to, the, say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Moving forward to verse 8. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna the highest. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king. Um, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So who is this Jesus? I want to um, encourage us and challenge us. As your pastor, will you take today and the rest of this week to draw in to the Lord, draw near to him, and ask the question, Lord, show me your glory. Reveal yourself to me. Let me know you more. Will you study this whole week? Study the accounts in the gospel of, of, the, of Jesus' last week on earth. Just be drawn in that you would see Jesus, that you would know him. And that from now on, he would be Lord and friend and king. Let this week be a powerful week. Uh, this isn't in the, the bulletin and it wasn't posted yet, but I'm going to add something to this week. We have Good Friday service uh, this Friday, but I'm going to add something here and now. This Wednesday, uh, I'm going to just open a time up from between 5.30 and 6.30, and I'll post this on emails and Facebook to just come in and pray. If you just want to come in, you need prayer. You need to know Jesus more. You need victory. You need to be released from something. You need help to not worry. You need to be prayed for. Now, we've gone through a week of prayer, and now it's time to pray for one another and pray with each other. So if that's, if that's something that's drawn on your heart, perhaps the Lord will put your heart during the week, come in on Wednesday and just be prayed for. Be available to pray for others. Simple as that. Maybe it's just a five-minute thing. Maybe you want to do a drive through one. Hunt the horn. I'll, I'll walk right, right out there. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes, let's pray. Let's, let's pray with one another. And then on uh, Friday, good, good Friday, it's not just another ceremony. I want us all to really know, understand the meaning of the cross, the reason for the cross. And, and I want everybody around us to know that. Because the cross is pivotal. It is the victory. Good Friday, just for me, it's, just not, it's not an option. We need to, ha we need to understand the, the cross. So, and there's some, uh, a very special service planned for that. And then, of course, Easter. Let's bring everybody on Easter. When we understand who Jesus is and what it means to have Jesus as king in our lives, it changes our lives, right? Our lives start to bring honor and glory to him. Not because of all the wonderful, successful things we do, because of the faithful things that we do, or just our faithfulness. We look at the, the testimony uh, of Donovan, faithful to come to the Lord every single day during the week of prayer and to trust the Lord during circumstances that are unknown. But his faithfulness brings God glory, brings, it honors him. I'm going to show a video here of uh, some well-known people, some athletes, giving glory to God. And some of these athletes, I want to tell you, you probably have heard some negative things about. That's okay. That's okay if you and I were interviewed and everybody else knew our life, you'd be like, huh, they're giving glory to God, but I know that they're not perfect. But uh, let's go ahead and, and read that video. This is what happens when Jesus has his place in our life. Now, these guys, you could read a lot about them and go, oh, what about when they said this or that, when they did this or that? They're just like you and I, but they need even more prayer because they're right in the spotlight, right? But I like, I, I like where we, this, this is an awesome video. I'm going to post it, um, um, I'm going to email this out. It's like maybe six more minutes of just inspiration. Uh, Tim Tebow goes on to say that um, when he posted that 316, John 316, everybody started looking that up. And oh, uh, his coach, Myers, said, hey, did you know that 
when they had their uh, championship and he was wearing John 3, 16, 94 million people Googled that during the, during the championship game. And he's like, whoa, I didn't know 94 million people didn't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> but we never, when Jesus becomes king of our life, when we realize what he has done for us and who he is, he becomes king. And he calls us to represent him, to bring him honor and glory. And when our life is for him, there's just one fist pumping moment after the other. One fist pumping moment after the other. We, see, we get to see lives change. We get to see him grab a hold of our life and give us new hope. We get to wake up at three in the morning feeling more desperate than ever and yet have him to cry out to and know that he's doing something to intercede for us. When Jesus is king, we let the world know about it. And this is what he does for us. He fights for us. He advocates for us. Jesus looked at Jerusalem as he looks at our lives and said, if, if you only knew what would bring you peace. The message this morning is that Jesus brings us close and he removes everything that gets in the way. When he went into the temple, in Matthew chapter 21, 12 through 14, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the, of the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said, my house will be called the house of prayer, but you have make, you're making a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. So going into Passion Week, this is what he did. He went into the temple that was supposed to represent and be a way for people to connect with God. And it became a place that pushed them away. And look how passionate he was about that. He said, no, I don't want anybody getting in the way of you and I. I will remove everything. And he has. And all that is left is for us to say, yes, I will come to you. He's removed everything. Flipping tables over. We misunderstand his passion. It's not just passion because of a passionate person. He's passionate about you and I. He wants us close to him. He wants us close to him. No matter how much Bible knowledge we have, no matter how much worldly knowledge or experiences we have, until we understand that God wants us close and Jesus is the one who brings us close, we don't, we don't understand anything. Look at this picture. AI was asked to um, write a picture about that passage. The passage was, uh, the, the ask of AI is, is um, do a, a rendering of Jesus flipping over tables, from, from, specifically from this passage. So what does AI do? It takes all the information available to it around the world on the internet, and it generates this. This is Jesus flipping over tables, according to AI. Pretty cool picture, but you missed it, AI. You, you missed it. In the same way, when Jesus was flipping over tables, we need to understand something. He wasn't just showing that it's okay to get angry sometimes. It's what he was angry about. What he was angry about is distance between us and him. What he was angry about is people, religious people, holding people back. And he's telling you and I this morning, as he rides in as a victorious, victorious concrete king, that he has removed everything. There's not a single person in here who is a second class or second tier Christian. Every single one of us is in the family of God and just as valuable and just as able to get close to him. There's not a single person in here that is meant to observe somebody else leading and serving and being victorious. Every single one of us here has been invited into a close, intimate, real relationship with our Heavenly Father. Jesus has made it known that we have a Father in Heaven, and He is real. And every barrier, even our own thinking, Jesus will give us victory over. He has done everything for us. Everything. I'm going to leave you with this last story. Relatively short compared to eternity. My dad had a lot of great qualities. <sighs> we, he, he, when he first came um, to the United States, he came several different attempts. And he was the first in his family, being the oldest son, 
um, and, the, and one of the first from his village to, uh, to come over. And his brother and other, uh, and other family members, they tried, and it was a difficult time, and, and he would help them. And I heard this story of when my um, uncle did all that he could to, to come over, and he thought he had his paperwork uh, done and taken care of. And when he um, came to the United States, he was uh, deported or sent back in one way or another, and he was just hurt, and, and he hated to go back to his hometown. He felt like um, just down on his luck. And um, what my dad did, even in his limited English, was and his unfamiliarity with the systems, figure out how to fix his paperwork, how to get it done. He did all that work for him. And then my dad worked extra to save up money to travel back to his hometown and got his paperwork to do that. He did what he had to do to be able to go there and back. And he traveled all the way to uh, this little tiny village in the middle of a mountain range that takes a six hour dirt road um, ride to get there. And he's walking through the hometown from, a, from the bus stop outside of town. And my uncle sees him walking up and says, what are you doing? How did you get here? What? And he comes to him and he says, look. And he opens up some paperwork. This is all yours. It's all fixed. It's all cleared. You're ready to go. All you have to do is pack up and come, and come with me. Not only that, I've been working on um, some work for you. You're going to come live with me, and I'm going to walk with you into this new life in this new country, being on a pathway to becoming a, a, a citizen. And, and my uncle just tells a story in tears. I can't believe you would do that for me. I thought that this was my life here, that I, was, that I didn't make it, and this is my life. And now I see all this legal stuff done for me. It's taken care of. And I just have to follow you to my new home. What? And Jesus did a much greater thing for us. Came from heaven, comes to us where we are, in our deepest pit, in our deepest despair, and says, I've done everything. I've taken care of it. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder how to get out of your stress, your difficulty, your inability, your distance. Stop thinking about how. Just grab my hand. Grab my hand. Trust that I have the how, that I am the why, the what, and the how. Trust that. Trust that. Hold on to my hand. Make me center and king of your life. I will hold on to your hand, and even when you feel like you're going down, I'm still pulling you up. Hold on to me. Let me be, Lord, because I am your victorious king. Nobody loves you like Jesus. Nobody can take care of you like Jesus. The only thing that is needed is for us to actually trust, actually hold on to him, actually say yes, actually say you're my king and I'm going to tell everybody about it even if they only see the worst side of me. I'm going to let you be known in my life from now on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you only because of what you've done, Jesus. We thank you that you have done all the work to remove the barriers between us and you. Thank you, Lord, that even though we've tried so hard to live this life on our own and to make ourselves impressive for you, that you, thank you that you don't need it and you don't want it. You just want us, Lord. And for every person in here, Lord, who is struggling to get to you, I pray that you would remove the barriers right here, right now, Lord, and draw us into your heart. Draw us into your heart. Draw us into a life. Walk us into a new life with you. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you need that for the first time this morning, you realize that you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart and your life as king with a rededication of the first time. Pray with me right now if you need Jesus to be king in your life. This is for believers too. If you need Jesus to be king in your life, pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that on the cross, you paid for all of my sins and you set me free. I believe that you, Jesus, bring me close to my heavenly father. I grab your hand right now, Jesus. I trust you and I ask you to come into my life and walk me into new life with you. And I'll we'll, make this decision this morning by your grace with your help. In your holy name, amen. Worship. There is a truth older than the age.
ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is freedom from the chain that binds us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside There is a song that comforts in the night. There is a voice that comes a storm that rages. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the water, who speaks to the sea, who stands. as possible to Easter. People are open to the invite more than at any point in the calendar year. And we got to get the word out um, uh, by word of mouth, much more than by any advertising. Bring as many people as possible. Let's fill this room up. Go in God's grace and peace.